So for the rigging and animating workflow, so this is part three, we're gonna be using Rigify as well as uh, the Rococo plugin. If you just look for a Rococo Blender plugin, you have to sign up and create an account and uh, whatever, right? But this plugin is super powerful. To see this section here that says retargeting is probably really tiny. Um, that's what we're gonna use. But what we're gonna start with here is we're gonna start with the, um, the Rigify. A uh, couple things we need to deal with first. Usually if you hit the end panel and you look at the size, look at the Z axis, 17.2 meters is way too tall. Um, I'm also locked here on scale. I guess the, uh, the original author locked it. Um, but we're going to bring this way down to around 1.8 meters on the Z axis, right? Maybe 1.78 or something, something like that. So near six feet tall. Okay, um, then we're going to apply all the transforms and now our model is a uh, reasonable uh, height. So what we can do is we can press uh, Control A, no, Shift A, sorry. We'll do armature, basic, and we're gonna do a basic human rig. So to get this roughly in line, you're gonna wanna scale it down until these, what I always look for is these shoulder blades. Um, this needs to line up with kind of where your shoulders are and that's that's kind of my starting reference point And then I make everything else kind of fit um, Under here you're gonna to want to go to viewport display and check in front uh, Sometimes people use stick. I know Royal Skies like stick for the armature phase um, We're just gonna leave it as octahedral Which is fine um, So what we want to do here actually is we're gonna apply the scale on this guy um, I'm a little bit neurotic about applying scale because there is a whole mess you can get into if your rig versus your model aren't, if the scale isn't set to one before you start. So quick tip, always double check your model and your rig, the scale should be should be one. Uh, we don't need the breast bones here, so we can just uh, delete those. And what I will do, we're gonna basically modify this. We're gonna turn on symmetry on the X axis. So I usually start with the arm uh, shoulder is about in the right place. We're going to rotate these guys, um, bring it up. Probably going to bring this in. Um, for the weight painting process, you want this to kind of be right in the armpit or close to this angle. Um, this guy's going to be on the elbow. This starts at the wrist. And then you're going to want to pull the hand out to about the edge of the fingers. For these three, you want to make sure the roll is set at 90. All right, so we'll move maybe these out a little, knees come out. Um, this model's a bit weird, you'll see in a second, like if you look at human anatomy and human proportions, um, this model actually has, has some issues there. Um, when you're selecting the toe bone, you wanna make sure you get all these three things. Um, but normally, let's go hit number three, we'll go to side view. Normally there's a lot more bend in the knee. So normally like the knee comes out from the body and then you bend back in. So uh, this rig is, a, this model is a little bit kind of perched forward for some reason. Um, that's fine. So what you do is you take the whole rig in edit mode. We're just going to pull it back. And once again, I'm really looking at those shoulders areas. We're going to make sure that um, is all lining up. I'm going to pull the knee back and then this guy back here. And then I would click the whole toe bone here, not just the joint and kind of pull it into place. Select the whole heel and then drag that uh, into place. So the, the head is actually really important. Um, I've learned this the hard way. This is where the chin should be. So uh, the way this guy's face is, that's way off. So you wanna bring this, uh, let's just move on Z, probably down to here, and then try to make these about equal. Go to seven, top view, and we're gonna pull some of these um, into place. Shoulders a bit set forward, but that should be okay. I'm hoping I haven't forgotten anything. Usually you want to just pan around and make sure the whole model is kind of contained within the rig. Okay. Um, so when that's done, I'm just going to save and once again, use power save. I'm about to generate the rig, so I know that's coming. So I'm just going to slap on a power save here. Uh, with that done, we're going to go ahead and generate the rig. So this is the Rigify rig that gets generated. And what you need to do is you actually need to take the, the mesh as well as the original rig, select those two, and then select the new rig last. And we're gonna hit Control P and we're gonna parent with automatic weights. 
All right, so we have the um, famous bone heat weighting issue. It's so funny, I did this uh, earlier today, exact same model, exact same process, and didn't get that issue. Um, so something in the model is not happy, and I'll try to show you um, how we can kind of fix that in real time. So the first thing I'm just gonna undo until that rig is gone. And what you'll notice is that before we even make that, uh, generate that rig, uh, you can test it out first just on the meta rig. If you can't bind to the meta rig or you can't parent to the meta rig, it's not going to work. So I think likely what's happening here is that the hair is causing uh, issues. Either that or we have some overlapping vertices. So we'll try to do mesh, clean up, merge by distance. We did remove 17. Um, sometimes I'm a little nervous that like if the threshold's too small, some of these interior vertices are going to get lost. Um, but maybe that's okay. So we'll try that first and then we'll try to parent and then we're still getting an issue. So my gut feeling in this case is that it's the hair. Um, the hair is going to be the biggest, the most problematic surface for sure. Um, so in this case I would hide the meta rig. Let's go into x-ray mode. So I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts here, so I apologize for that. But alt Z brings us into x-ray. Um, if you select everything and then press control L, we can hide almost everything. Uh, and then we're just <laughs> left with these kind of creepy eyes and, and mouth. Uh, so I'm going to click on these, hit control L, hide. Um, click these two, control L, hide, and one more. I might have, yeah, so that's the tongue and the bottom teeth. Kind of need to be careful that you're not selecting something you don't want to hide. Control L and then hide. All right, so we're left with the hair. And what we need to do here, honestly, is we need to do all this and then separate by selection. So it's a bit of a pain. Um, I'll show you how to bring this back in in a sec. But if we hide that, this should not have issues. Uh, hopefully I'm not missing something else. But let's go ahead and try to uh, parent it now. So we do, there we go. So it will parent with automatic weights so once you remove the hair. So we'll go back to our rig. Um, turn x-ray off and we'll generate the rig and then we'll do that same thing we select the, the model the original rig and then finally we select the new rig last and then control p automatic weights all right so at this point we should be able to switch to pose mode and then move this stuff around and this should look okay if you did the neck bones wrong the head is going to look super weird um, it already looks weird as it is but what you'll find is that like there's a lot of deformation of the lower mouth area. Um, and even in this case, I'm not, I should, could have done this a little better, but what I would really suggest is play around with these rigs. And even if you have to use power save and go back and forth, it's really worth the exercise. Like this neck bone is too far forward. I'm seeing that now because just the deformation along the back looks really unnatural. Um, but we'll go with it for now. All right, so getting this back into the model, the way you do that is we're going to switch back to object mode, click the hair and then the body second, I think. Yeah, so hair first, body second, press control J and you get it back. But of course, what's gonna happen now is um, if we can get into pose mode, the hair doesn't, <laughs> the hair doesn't have any weights painted, right? So it just moves, uh, moves you know, it's, it's not moving with the head. So how do you fix it? It's pretty easy. Um, we're gonna do click the control rig armature first, not the bit, not the meta rig, the control rig. Then shift click the mesh, and we're gonna go into weight paint. Now, what you need to do is you need to search for um, the vertex group. So before I go ahead, I'm actually gonna press Alt H. That's gonna bring the whole model back in, and. Rather than clicking around the bones, because that can be definitely finicky, uh, if you try to hit control click, you can click on the bones and try to change the weights. But what we need to do is we need to find the bone that's responsible for the head. Um, so, you know, you would just click through these. In my case, I know it's spine six. And what you see here, right, is um, the head has weights, but the hair has nothing. So we can go back here. We're just going to hide all that again, all right? So apologies I'm going a little fast here but if you tab and then hide the other vertices we can just paint the the head so increase that brush size with F and then we're gonna do a linear fall off it's just gonna make it uh, actually we'll do 
we'll do a constant fall off. That'll make painting this a lot easier, a lot faster and less error prone because you're not going to have uh, partially painted uh, edges or surfaces. So that's going to paint the whole head with 100% weight. Um, you can get complicated with this if you want, right? Um, maybe we can, I don't know, maybe we can do a lighter paint on the bottom, right? As we get near the bottom here. Uh, actually what I wanted to do there was change the weight. So you could do something like this. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> there's always pros and cons to weight painting. It is kind of painful. Uh, but maybe we'll go with that is a little, little bit better. Not really though, because if you look at where it is on the ear, that's not really matching then. And the ultimate test is always going to be, um, actually moving, moving the bone, right? So if we go to pose mode and then we're going to maybe rotate this, uh, this way and this way, it's not horrible. It's pretty good actually. So we'll, uh, we'll stick with that. Okay. Um, so at this point we're almost done. We are going to use uh, Mixamo animations. So I've got some of these pulled up. We're going to take a look at this in a minute. Uh, but in order to actually use the Mixamo animations on the rig, we have to turn off all the IK because it's, it's a whole thing. I'm not going to get into it, but right now this control rig is controlling the arm using uh, what's called inverse kinematics. So you move this control point and then it does the math to figure out how those bones should uh, deform to get you to that position. What we need to do is click on, go to pose mode, click on the hand, and then this IKFK, you're gonna drag that all the way to the right. So all the way on the right means you're fully in forward kinematics, meaning that's not gonna do anything, right? Um, the reason for this, and you're gonna do it for the feet as well, so I'll just go ahead and do this. So the reason for this is that these motions are going to be retargeted and to match bone by bone. So we don't want the rig to actually be controlled with inverse kinematics. We want it to be controlled by the original bones. Okay, so I'm going to stop this section here. This is how we get our basic rig in place. Um, in the next one, we're going to take a look at uh, the Mixamo. A Mixamo, I don't know how to say it. Uh, we're going to look at those animations. We're going to import these uh, with some special settings. And finally, we're going to set everything up so it can come into Godot when we do the final import. Okay, so thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.